It's one of the hilly and mountainous regions, and this lady lives further from the nearest town. It takes 300 kilometers from the nearby town traveling in this Maram road. And we thought we were done until we reached where the bridge is almost collapsing due to heavy rains, and we have to leave the car there and get a motorcycle in order to continue our way to Agatha. It wasn't an easy journey, but finally we made it. One of the reasons why we traveled such a long distance was to see Agatha, whose body organs don't function, but what she's capable of doing shocked everyone. She can read and write, yet she never went to school. She can weave mats with her tongue, yet none taught her to do so. She says that whatever she does, all is a gift from Jesus. Meet our extraordinary friend. Call me Agatha. It takes three days to complete such a mat. It takes long because I don't have arms. I use my mouth, but surprisingly, no one taught me to do this. It came naturally. After growing up, I thought of what I could do, and I realized I can manage one thing, waving mats with my tongue. <laughs> I never went to school due to my body where most of my organs don't function. Ever since I was born, I have never woken up and stood on my feet by myself. For that reason, I was not able to attend school. I did not even have a chance of having a private tutor here at home. With her mouth, she can manage to handle a pen and write in her good handwriting. We were amazed by how she can do this, yet she never went to school. She says it just came to her at once, and she felt that within herself, then started writing and even reading. We were amazed by seeing a book of prayers she wrote. Here, she tells us how she started writing. <laughs> The way I knew writing was by Jesus, because no one, not even a single person, taught me how to handle a pen and start writing. He did it to prove how mighty that name is, and to also prove that he can give everything. In 2002, I was left with a brother and one younger sister. My mother always prayed and could leave the Bible with us. And all we could do is going through the Bible, looking for just one word, Jesus. Surprisingly, this girl told us that she can use a mobile phone. Here it was hard for us to understand this, where we told her to talk to one of our journalists who was away. And of course, they communicated very well. She was born in 1987. This means she's a 34-year-old woman, and she says she has never woken up. Seeing her lying down, you can think that maybe her arms and legs are okay, but none of her body organ functions. It takes someone else to even bend her legs or lift her. If not that, she can remain in one place for the rest of her life. <laughs> This is how she was born. She can't make a single movement. She can't even rise up or even sit. She's always lying down like this. We do each and everything for her. Her legs and arms are not active. They don't function. All she does is using the mouth to do some little activities, says the mother. She's my firstborn. She's followed by other four children. But when she was born, doctors saw that she had some disabilities, and they told me that there was nothing wrong with having a disabled child. All they advised me was to take care of her, of which I did as a parent, and this was my responsibility. During those times, having a disabled child 
was like a taboo. I was despised by the society, whether friends and families. They all went against me. But in truth, I did not take part in producing a disabled child. But disability is not inability. Now my daughter is proving wrong all those who said that she won't make it in life. They said she'll be a burden. During those days, most people, almost everyone, abandoned us and they never visited us. Most people feared that if they came and visited us, they would have more chances to also produce disabled children, mostly pregnant women. They had a false belief. And later, after God manifested himself to my child and taught her reading and writing, other pregnant women would come and tell my daughter to pray for them. But trust me, they had good babies. During morning hours, after Agatha wakes up, she crawls trying to go outside or near the mother, which is always a difficult challenge for her because legs and arms don't support her while crawling. This means she uses only her belly to push herself forward. Most, if not every day, her mother is the one who has to clean and wash her every day, then give her breakfast if there is any. After this, the mother has to lift her and put her in the house, in one room where she spends the whole day on a mat, doing her daily weaving activities. In front of her, there are always a few things to distract her. This includes books where she writes whatever she wants and some prayers, and a mobile phone and so many others. By when she had four years, I took her to the hospital. But doctors could say that they have nothing to help her and no way to treat our daughter. So we came here and gave that up. We were always worried about her and her future. She was the only child we had, but later we produced other children. And we were lucky enough that all the four children who came after her were normal. This girl says that she spends most of her days locked inside. Like when there is no one else around, they have to lock her inside. All she does is singing, write some personal stories and weave these small mats. She says she always spends most of her days inside to avoid people's arrogance. Her neighbors around always discourage her saying she is not a human. Most of them told this girl that she won't make it in life. She says she doesn't like the public due to such harsh comments on her. But she also says that she does not care on what people say as long as she breathes and knows deep inside her that she can. She added that in the coming days, she would like to be a motivation speaker so as to motivate those people out there who lost hope and confidence in themselves because of how they were born. The mother concludes that she spends most of her time taking care on this daughter alone due to her disability. But she says raising the five children and having one of them who cannot manage to do a single activity is one of the life challenges she has ever faced. The mother says that as hate, bullying and criticism on her daughter increased, it gave her a million reasons to love her daughter more. She says that she will do each and everything for her daughter, no matter what. We don't run away from challenges because we are afraid. Instead, we run towards them because the only way to escape fear is to trample it beneath our foot. When we least expect it, life sets us a challenge to test our courage and willingness to change. At such a moment, there is no point in pretending that nothing has happened or in saying that we are not yet ready. The challenge will not wait Life does not look back. Thank you for watching. I'm Elijah. This is Afrimax English. Remember to subscribe.